A key point to understand is Autodesk Storm and Sanitary Analysis does also sanitary wastewater sewer modeling. So here we've got a small sub-regional sanitary sewer shed which we're going to model which contains a wet well and then a force main that takes it off onto the interceptor that eventually ends up in the wastewater treatment plant. Let's just take a quick look at this model. If we zoom in on this you can see the individual junctions or manholes and that's where we have the associated sanitary loadings. If I double click on these it'll bring up the dialog for the junction and you can see up on top it says external inflows and this is representing inflows that we've associated to this particular junction. So here you can see we've got a flow of 1.57 gallons per minute and we've placed a time pattern on it. You can have a diurnal time pattern. You can have numerous time patterns. This is a residential time pattern that is one of the default time patterns and you can see here we have a diurnal pattern so we're starting at 12 midnight and it's falling off uh, in very early morning it's uh, nearly zero and then it starts to build up again. Here we have uh, early morning when people are getting ready for work and cooking breakfast and they're leaving and then it a minor peak around noon and falls back off and then a big peak again around dinner time and then falls off. So here we have a residential pattern that we've associated for the sanitary loading. Now we can see it on the junction by junction basis but another way to look at it is by looking at all of the loadings that have been associated to this system. So we can see all of the manholes listed and we have dry weather sanitary inflows that are associated on each of these junctions. And we can scroll down through this list and pick a particular junction that's of interest for us and take a look at what's going on for its loading and we can figure out, okay, is that the correct value? So once we've got our loadings associated with the system, we've also got a little wet well so that we can store the, the sewage and then that when it fills up this storage chamber, then it's pumped by this wet well through a force main and then off to the interceptor. We can specify a pump curve, so if we have a known pump curve, we can put that in. You can have multiple pumps, so you can have a primary pump and a secondary pump that kicks in and then you can also put it in design mode and it will essentially help you design the size of pump that you'll need to run the system. And then you can set up some operational controls so that you turn the pump on and off based on what the depth in the wet well is. Let's go ahead and run the simulation. Okay and there it's finished for us. Let's go ahead and close the analysis dialog and we can start to see what's happening with this. So I'm interested in what the loading is that's coming into this wet well. So I can right click on that and I can say display time series plot. It'll show me the inflow coming in at that wet well. And of course those pumps are going to turn on and off as they start to empty that wet well. And then when they start to fill back up they'll turn back on again. And you can look at the pumping rate associated to that. We could also map on here the flow rates right on the horizontal plan view. So to do that I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose display options. And in here under link I'm going to select flow rate. And I'll put in a little legend for us. And we'll put in the links legend and we'll put in our link value. I'll select OK to that. You can bring up a little output animation dialog. And here we can step to, through our model and see what's happening and see how does that pump turn on and off. And we can actually animate this and we could record that and play that back as an AVI file or a WMV file. There's a variety of different video formats that we, pr we provide to look at that. Similarly, you could look at that from a profile view. And let's say we want to take the entire project right off into Excel. We could go to Output and I can select Excel Table Reports and it's going to push the entire project right off into Microsoft Excel. And here we have Excel and we can see the report. It's got all of our pipes, all the manholes or junctions it's flowing from and to. 
the length of the pipe, the inverts, the average slope, the total drop of that pipe, what type of pipe it is, what the pipe diameter is, what our Manning's roughness coefficient is, entrance and exit loss coefficients, whatever we have defined as far as input, and then you can actually see the actual results. So we can see our peak flow value, the time when it actually occurs, what's our maximum flow velocity in the pipe, what's the travel time in the pipe, what's the design capacity of that actual pipe. So we want to make sure that we're not exceeding the design flow. Usually you don't want to run a sanitary sewer pipe more than 50%. And so we can see what these ratios are. This is for our pipes. We can look at our wet well that we've defined. We can look at our manholes. We can see our pumps. All of the data you use to build your model is represented in your Excel report. And you can also build your own report. You can go to Output. You can choose Custom Report Options. And we bring Report Generator, which you can then build your own custom report. You can specify which sections you want to include in your report. Scroll down and select which sections you want to include, which ones you want to exclude, and then go to the specific tabs that are in the report generator. And you can, these are the available fields. You can then go in and define what the field name is that you want to put it in. So you, you could type in whatever value you want. You can specify the decimal precision and what the units you want to put out. We support both metric SI and US units. And so you can jump to whatever section you want once you're happy with it, then have it kick out either a PDF report or you can send this all off into Microsoft Excel.